determine the magnitudes and directions of the currents through all the resistors. So in this problem, we are dealing with uh, three resistors. Let's say that we have uh, resistor 1 um, being equal to 2 ohms. Let us uh, label our circuit so we can easily recognize our resistors. So let's say that resistor 1 equal to 2 ohm, resistor 2 equal to 8 ohm and this will be our resistor 3 be equal to 4 ohms so again let us apply Kirchhoff's uh, current law and voltage law in this uh, given uh, circuit so required we are required to get i1 i2 and i3 so since we are looking for three variables i1 i2 i3 so we need at least three equations to use so that later on we'll solve the three equations simultaneously so that we can find an equation looking for each uh, current so let us try to solve so again so first we have to label the resistors of which uh, end is the positive uh, potential i mean positive terminal and the negative terminal so the voltage sources have already been labeled of which is the positive which is the positive uh, terminal and the negative terminal so let's just again assume the uh, direction of the current for example for resistor one let's say that the, direct, the direction of the current is going in this direction for resistor 2 let's say current is going in this direction and for resistor 3 let's say that the current is going in this direction going downward so this is your i1 i2 and i3 okay so first for our first equation let us um, have a current equation using Kirchhoff's current law, KCL at node, let's say KCL, let's say at this node. So we have two nodes, but let's use this one. Let's say this is node A. So KCL or current, current law at node, at node A. So at node A, according to Kirchhoff's current law on a given node, all the current going, all the currents going in is equal to the current going out. So, current in, let's say I in, is also equal to the current going out of that node. So, looking at node A, there are two currents going in at node A. So, that is current 1, I1, and I2. So, I1 plus I2 are the currents going in at node A and going out is I3. Okay, so the, let this be our equation number one. So let us let us get uh, two more equations so that we can solve these three variables at once. So let us apply KVL to get the second equation, uh, KVL at loop one. So let's consider the left uh, closed path of the circuit as loop 1. Let us assume that the direction of this loop is clockwise. So let's say this is loop 1. Okay, applying KBL at loop 1, so again, we for our resistor, this is higher potential going to lower potential, higher potential going to lower potential, higher potential to lower potential so applying now KBL at loop one let us determine which among these elements are uh, voltage drops and voltage rise or the potential drop and the potential rise so if you will follow this loop one going across resistor one this loop will enter the positive terminal and will go out to the negative terminal therefore voltage across r1 will be a potential drop again applying our uh, um, Kirchhoff's voltage law that uh, voltage drop voltage drop voltage rise plus the negative potential or the potential drops is equal to zero so the voltage across R1 is a negative potential 
a potential drop. So this is negative V1 plus following again the loop of 1. It will pass through 6 volts but it will enter the negative terminal and will leave the positive terminal. Therefore, this 6 volts will be a positive potential. So it will be plus 6 volts plus 6 plus okay following loop 1 and going across R3 it will enter positive leave the negative terminal therefore voltage 3 will be a negative potential or potential drop minus V3 plus considering the another voltage source 3 volts again following the direction of the loop it will enter the negative terminal and will leave the positive terminal therefore this 3 volts is a positive potential or a potential rise equal to zero okay simplifying our equation negative v1 this is the product of i1 r1 plus 6 minus i3 r3 3 equal zero so this is negative i1 r1 minus i3 r3 is equal to negative 6 minus 3 so uh, r1 is 2 ohms r3 is 4 ohms so this will be negative 2 i1 minus 4 i3 equals negative 9 so let this let this be our equation number 2 we already have our equation number 1 so let us create another equation let us consider this loop on the right side of the circuit let's say the loop the second loop will go on this direction let's say this is loop 2 okay so that is our loop, uh, second loop. Let us create an equation for that loop. Okay, let us follow the same principle. If it will go on this loop, on this direction, voltage at resistor 3 will be a negative potential because it will leave the negative terminal. For equation 3, V3 is a negative potential. Our potential drop plus 9 volts will be um, positive potential. It will leave the positive terminal plus 4 voltage 2 will be a negative potential. Negative voltage 2 plus for the 6 volt it will be a positive potential or potential rise plus 6 equals 0. So again V3 is the product of I3 R3 negative 9 plus uh, 6 minus I2 R2 9 plus 6 is 15 equals 0. So this will be R3 is 4 ohms R2 is 8. So this is negative 4 I3 minus 8 I2 equals negative 15 so this is our equation number three now we have uh, these three equations equation one equation two and equation three so let us analyze this equation so that it will be easier for us to find any of the variable i1 i2 and i3 so looking at our equation, it both include I3. In uh, equation 2 and 3 both have um, I3. So if we will express I1 and I2, if we will e express I1 in equation 2 in terms of I3, so and I2 in terms of I3, then we'll substitute it to equation number one then all the variables in equation number number one will become i3 so that's our goal we need to find a, an equation wherein there will all there will only be one variable so let's express equation two in terms of i3 expressing equation two in terms of i3 so we'll just simplify this equation this will become 
negative 2i1, 2i1 is equal to 4i3 minus 9. Divide this by negative 2. Divide this term by negative 2. Cancel. I1 in terms of I3 is negative 2. I3 plus 9 halves. So this is I1 in terms of I3. And for I2, this will become negative 8. I2 is equal to negative 15 plus 4i3 divide this by negative 8 cancel by negative 8 i2 in terms of i3 is 15 over 8 minus 1 half i3 so we have now I1 and I2 in terms of I3. Now, if we will both substitute I1 and I2 in equation number 1, then we will have an equation that we on, that I3 is the only variable. So, substitute I1 and I2 to equation 1. According to our equation 1, I1 plus I2 is equal to I3, where I1 is equal to negative 2 I3 plus 9 halves I2 is 15 over 8 plus 15 over 8 minus 1 half I3 equals i3 so if you'll notice this equation will not we can now get i3 from this equation okay so let us first try to simplify this equation let us uh, group like terms this will negative 2 i3 minus 1 half i3 then Transferring this i3 to the left side, this will become minus i3 is equal to transferring 9 halves to the other side, negative 9 over 2, transferring also minus 15 over 8. Okay, so by simplifying this equation now, negative 2 i3 minus 1 half i3 will have 1 and 1 half i3. I oh, know this is negative negative. So this is negative all negative. Therefore the total of these terms will be negative 3 and 1 half i3 is equal to negative 9 over 2 minus 15 over 8 okay fifteen over eight okay so how, solving for further for this equation negative three and one half this is negative seven over two I three is equal to negative nine over two minus fifteen over eight. Let us multiply both sides by 8. So this will become 4 times negative 7 I3 
is equal to 4 times negative 9 minus 15 7 times 4 is negative 56 by 3 this is negative 72 um, and Oh, sorry, negative 36 minus 15. This is negative. So this is, this is not negative 56. This is negative 28. Negative 28. So negative 28 I3 equals negative how much this 11 get one negative 51 divided by negative 28 cancel negative 28 i3 therefore is 51 over 28 or this is approximately One point eighty two oh, sorry, one point eighty two amperes. So since we get a positive result for the value, therefore our assumption for I three is correct. So I three the direction for I three is going down. So let's just say this is going down. So for I1 and I2, we just have to substitute this value 51 over 28 to our equation for I1. So for example, for I1, this will be negative 2 times 51 over 28 plus 2. Solve. This will be negative 2, 51 over 28. Plus nine halves six over seven or zero point eight five seven or zero point eighty six amperes. I one is zero point eighty six amperes. So we get again a positive result. Therefore, I one. We are correct with our assumption going to the right. Okay, 0 0.86 ampere. Right. So this is our answer for I1. For I2, we do the same. Where's our I2? Okay, I2 equals 15 over 8 minus 1 half times I3 is 51 over 28.
So this is sixteen over eight minus one half times fifty one over twenty eight. Well, 27 over 28, or this is equal to 0 0.96 ohms. I2 is 0 0.96, oh sorry, amperes. Okay, again, positive, so we are correct with our assumption that I2 is going to the left. I2 going left. So this is our answer for I2. So I1 is 0 0.86 amperes going right. I2 is 0 0.96 amperes going left. And I3 is 1.82 amperes going down. Actually, we can confirm if we are correct also using our directly our calculator. So, for example, let us use our calculator to solve. We just have to set this to Mode 5, equation. What type of equation? Let's, uh, this is uh, three unknown, uh, three variables, three unknown, three variables equation. So, equation 2. A, N, X, P, N, Y, C, N, Z equal to a constant. So, mode 5, 2. So, for, for example, for equation 1, Let's say I1 is uh, A, I2 is B, I3 is C, and then the constant. So I1 is 1, I2 is 1, then C, I3, if we will transfer it to the left, will be negative 1 then the constant will be zero for equation number two i1 is negative two for i2 is zero for i3 is negative four and the constant is negative nine for equation 2. For equation number 3, we don't have I1 uh, in equation number 3. So I1 is 0. Then I2 is negative 8. I3 is negative 4. And the constant is negative 15. Okay. Let us just try to solve that. Okay. I1 is 6 over 7. This is our uh, value for I1. 0 0.86857. How about for I2? 27 over 28 or this is 0 0.96 that's our answer 0 0.96 amperes for i3 is 51 over 28 or 1.82 that is also our answer for i3 so we have just confirmed that all our answers are correct i1 is 0 0.86 amperes going right I2 is 0.96 amperes going left. 
and I3 is 1.82 amperes going down. So that's our assumption on our given circuit. 